save game review hi everyone and welcome to today's video where i'm gonna be reviewing some more 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 of your save games that's right everyone this is our 12th save game review and i have some doozies for you today so since you guys liked it a lot last time that i decided to uh you know randomly pick and choose save games that were interesting to me and uh you sort of wanted me to continue that that's why i have done that this week as well i just scrolled through the same games that you guys posted and i decided to pick out some interesting ones but but with a sub theme today of uh, achievement focused runs and i think we have some very very interesting ones the first one right here is obviously with the most difficult achievement if you do it without exploits and stuff like that in you for in my opinion eat your greens which requires you to conquer all of the grasslands provinces in asia starting as the tiny nation of kale right here and um you know this player obviously accomplished it by 1601 so i'm super super excited to see how this player did the hardest achievement in u4 without doing any exploits basically you gotta do it before the age of absolutism spawns then our second run for today right here is an oirat to yuan back in control campaign now this obviously isn't that difficult of an achievement it just requires you to you know own all of china as oirat and form yuan and stuff like that and have no other nation in china but the reason i picked this run is because it's done super super fast in 1473 so just under 30 years for this run so that's why i'm excited to check this one out and then finally our final run of the day is an aztec sunset invasion run by this player over here which obviously requires you to you know start as aztec and conquer a bunch of european capitals over here but um i think we have some other exciting things to look in all of these aside from, you know just at the achievements so without further ado let's jump into our first run of the day right here this eat your greens run kale to yuan obviously by plus uh five warple fork whatever that means and let's take a look at what this player said about this run so this is my 136.1 no exploit horde eat your greens run my u4 magnum opus in many ways i would tend to agree with that my income has been in the green only once this campaign in the 1570s or so, but I decided to take out loans and build courthouses and state houses instead of economy buildings. Trying to fit 5k dev into golf cap in 1600 is a bit of a pain. That is just a number though, I agree. You'll also love how I played the very start of this campaign. We'll check that out. It's the very day of the achievement. I didn't clean up to look better on video. For example, armies should have been reorganized 15 years ago, even though I don't really need cannons to win fights. Next, I plan to take my foot off the gas pedal, go into managed bankruptcy, already prepared or just finishing up some wars, then do court and country at the very beginning of the age of absolutism, make trade company investments, start rolling in money, and then do one faith of Vajrayana, by the way, one culture, Sino-Altaic, which I'd never done as well. Thanks. Well, this looks like a very, very interesting run, uh, even with everything that this player is planning for the future. So let's jump in. All right, all right, here we are in our not so little uh, Kale to Yuan campaign. And listen, why bother conquering all of the grasslands in Asia when you can just conquer all of Asia? <laughs> I think that's what this player did right here, man. Just a couple of provinces left in some countries, which are obviously irrelevant for this achievement. Uh, they're not grasslands or anything like that. So uh, yeah, this run is looking extremely, extremely good and extremely, extremely powerful. Aside from the fact that we are probably going to find some things that, uh, of course, in my save game reviews, I don't think that are that good but obviously let's start off with the great powers list number one what else did you think man 4700 dev obviously since this is a horde run everything has been raised and stuff like that otherwise this would be a lot more dev but uh yeah that's what we had to check out over there in the country view right here we got this uh 552 guy pretty good right there level two and one and two advisors you would think that you would have better advisors by this point in the game but uh let's not get ahead of ourselves obviously we're also in two wars right here versus persia and kazan obviously this player is continuing you know his run because you know they, they did say they want to do a what was it a vajrayana world conquest that's going pretty well and a sino altaic one faith so obviously that's going really well as well already doing lots of culture and religious conversion which is super super nice to see but going over in the government tab lots of nice bonuses active lots of cultures promoted and accepted doesn't really matter too much when you're going to convert everything obviously sometimes you want to accept before converting since it makes it so much cheaper and faster and stuff like that but no need to get into that too much in the 
diplomacy tab uh allied to portugal spain and russia pretty strong allies i guess well i guess russia not that much but portugal and spain i would assume are pretty powerful to help them beat up obviously someone that might be annoying to fight like the commonwealth or the ottomans or austria or france and someone like that even though this player can easily take down anyone over here by themselves why not get a few allies and make it a little bit easier over in the economy tab obviously we were expecting to see massive money losses and stuff like that but this player already has a plan for the future going into managed bankruptcy and stuff like that you know just chilling for a little bit for a couple of years right here and man the game is lagging so hard when in this uh economy tab but yeah uh got some gold mines not all of them develop up to 10 so that's definitely gonna help you getting your money up faster even though you're so huge these can still help out a lot so after you do all that bankruptcy and stuff like that or before actually since you are gonna want to use up your points make sure to develop the ones that aren't developed making pretty good income from trade uh not enough from tax obviously but you know the focus of this part of the campaign is rapid expansion right when you do this with no exploits you got to do all of this by 1600 it's pretty hard starting a scale man definitely one of the hardest achievements in u4 top three for sure uh in the trade department not making you know percentage wise actually the income from trade is pretty good it's just not that much obviously goods produced can be a lot better as well uh in the tech department ahead of time in every single tech global trade has spawned you know it's spreading pretty fast so no big deal on that aristo admin horde exploration obviously you know that's that's the strat right here aristo gotta do it for all the cav stuff admin obviously you want it for the ccr for the governing capacity horde ideas are just all around great for massive blobbing campaigns like this and then exploration not sure really why it's needed maybe to get to some guys over here to get the next to them or something like that or maybe for cloves or something since uncolonized provinces i don't think they count but yeah i guess it's just to get to some of these down here without uh you know going for too much trouble so would i pick exploration even if i did this achievement if it's necessary yeah but aside from that all of these other ones are looking really good no need to really take a look at the missions right here there we go this one can be taken uh yuan doesn't really have a great mission so what else do you want me to say regarding this uh yeah mongol empire can be formed obviously uh yeah we got one of these active which is pretty good these other ones are okay this one and this one are pretty good this one these two you don't need at all over in the stability and expansion uh just a slightly under guff cap we'll take a look at the building soon obviously guff cap is pretty limited during this point in the game and yeah good job on managing that with all the buildings like you said so we're pretty good right here uh going over into the religion tab obviously a uh, heavy focus on conversion to vajrayana but just so many provinces are owned that you're gonna have to wait and with three missionaries it is gonna be kind of slow but you will get uh, more missionaries soon obviously you'll be picking up religious and stuff like that so no need to concern yourself with this right now since you definitely definitely have time you own so much of the world by this point and you got 220 more years to play easy bro easy so good good job on this in the military department 60 percent cavalry compatibility really really strong massive force limit obviously not built up all the way really good morale really good army tradition decent discipline as well for this point in the game combat with this 30 with such heavy uh what you call it cavalry compatibility and a heavy focus on cav you can run full cav armies and obviously this player is pretty much running uh full cav armies over here man yeah i i don't think i see infantry anywhere let's see yeah there's no infantry yeah so really it's no big deal you can run like uh by this point just 34 cavalry along with uh yeah 34 cannons and stuff like that even though you don't really need that much cannons let's be real so no infantry whatsoever good job on that man uh really strong um what you call it generals as well and the subjects uh not a lot of subjects let's see where the where is the capital that's what i didn't take a look at and the capital is in india in bengal interestingly enough main trade node is also bengal by controlling this i feel like um let's see maybe not gujarat by this point but uh yeah hormuz could probably be a good end node or something like that or persia since gujarat has so many exits and stuff like that but then again since you hold doab and coromandel bengal is a pretty good pretty much end node by this point as well so yeah maybe work with work on a uh, trade a little bit but nice uh on all the trade companies and stuff like that i'm just uh you know if you trade company them can you really convert them you i don't know but uh yeah uh, over in the estates lots of crown and control lots of privileges granted to the tribes that's excellent absolutism hasn't spawned yet so things are looking pretty good right here aside from the obvious flaws you know like uh what you already said about the armies not being properly composed and of course the economy which you already you already know where your problems are right there's no need for me to talk about that all right now let's go ahead and go into development a little bit i'm not expecting to see anything too crazy here yeah a bunch of gold miners developed and then we got the capital which is gouda everything else is pretty standard right there since this is a horde 
forward run you're not really focusing on that too much autonomy i guess lowered everywhere that it can as much as it can but with so many trade companies obviously it wouldn't really be uh, you know it's not the same to judge it with all of those trade companies versus all of it being stated and this is the stuff that's stated obviously some stuff for gold mines over here and over here but uh no big deal on that in the buildings department let's take a look at the marketplaces so obviously so many of them can be built man massive massive amounts of marketplaces can be put down definitely get to that after you do your bankruptcy courthouses well not everywhere not everywhere even with such a heavy focus you do need to build a lot more of these so definitely go ahead and get that done uh you said that you were building state houses as well let's take a look at that so there are there any of these i guess there aren't not yet at least uh okay let's go into the workshops yeah not a lot of these as well you can build so much more you have all of asia bruh definitely get to that churches yeah a lot more churches can be built but i'm pretty satisfied with those let's see do we have some army stuff training fields nope let's take a look at barracks some barracks i guess the ai built these so yeah definitely suboptimal in the uh what you call it in the buildings department as well so yeah i think we've taken a look at everything that we need to take a look at including the future goals see there's the cultures once again there's the religion once again and now we can go ahead and uh take a look at the government reforms step nomads martial society religious society cavalry warfare centralized power barbaric despoilers for staying a horde obviously this is what you're gonna do so everything is perfect right here in the government tabs uh i guess you won't be going a monarchy no need to just continue the horde run and now let's go ahead and take a look at the timeline obviously we started off as scale over here so let's take a look at the opening okay fighting these guys pushing hard into you know it's saying oh actually giving away land that's very nice so yeah this is all to become a horde uh really pretty much taking land losing land so this is um kale who are we now i don't know who we are now since the color changed but uh yeah there we go there's more expansion this is Kal oh there it's kalka it's kalka i get it now perfect so now i see the expansion it's kind of wonky in these uh timeline runs but there we go rapid expansion in india and in china pretty much uh all different uh sort of uh expansion opportunities over here branching out in different sides pushing here pushing in india southeast asia china there we go some more in china some more into the hordes in persia right here getting to the you know the what you call it the mashriq here as well more expansion in india and in china let's see pushing down there in maritime southeast asia finishing off the hordes finishing off india we got sumatra right here finishing off china looking really good there we go yuan has been formed ming is still alive and now it just some minor cleanups right here at the end so apologies that i didn't catch that kalka flip immediately it's kind of wonky in the timeline but uh yeah man excellent excellent run gotta give you major major points for doing one of the hardest achievements in u4 and uh you know with all of that you know you explained what your problems are you know how to fix them i can assume since you did this and possible achievement and you're continuing to do a one culture one faith that you already know what you're doing so no real need for me to comment on stuff right here and uh you know obviously by the criteria that we've set over here in uh you know what you call it in a save game review you would think that i am not able to give you a five out of five just for the horrible economy and the uh, you know the missteps with the buildings and slight missteps with the armies as well but uh this player already knows how to fix them and right we review every save game on uh for what it is basis right it's not like i'm gonna rate the uh, an ottoman world conquest the same as a tall luca playthrough or something like that right we judge them for what they are so yeah even with all the negative things that we can see for this campaign right now the hardest part of this campaign has been accomplished and you're well on your way to accomplish two other pretty difficult tasks as well of doing a one culture one faith and i think you will be able to accomplish that so even with all of the negatives you know how to fix them i'm still giving this campaign a five out of five listen eat your greens it really is that hard if you don't delay the age of absolutism so that's our first campaign of the day really good job let's move on with the next one all right let's go ahead and jump into our second campaign of the day which is an oirat to yuan back in control run by cannibal muffin on may 3rd 1473 like i said at the start of the video i chose this run because we haven't taken a look at something like this uh i don't think in save game review so far and i do think i'm actually not an expert on this you you can probably do it a lot faster uh but uh yeah i i chose it because it's done uh, so quickly you know only 29 years right here uh to form yuan as Oy rat and do the back and control achievement obviously this was done with a lot of truce breaks and stuff like that most likely which we'll see but what i'm more interested in seeing about this run is despite the fact that this was done so quickly how playable 
is this after, you know? It doesn't mean that just because we gave the last campaign a 5 out of 5, even with all of the problems, that we're gonna give this campaign a 5 out of 5 if it also has problems just because the achievement is done. So, let's take a look at what this player said regarding this run. Cannibal Muffin right here says, All right, to Yuan with backing control achievement, controlling all of China, done by 1473, personal speedrun, and my first try. All right, if it's your first try, let's take a look. All right, all right, here we are once again in a Yuan run. It just happened to be like that. You know, I chose them for different reasons. It just happens that both of these runs, ha you know, have Yuan in them. But uh, let's first see if the achievement is valid. And um, yeah, it is. You do own all of China, so good job on that. All right, opening up the tab right here, let's take a look at the Great Powers list. Uh, we are technically number one on the Great Powers list. This was just done. This player didn't even let the month take over because, uh, you know, they've just, formed you one and it hasn't refreshed yet we is still up here but you are number one on the great powers list pretty ahead of everyone else in fact that's really really good dude look the ottomans have barely expanded at all man so really nice run right there all right let's take a look at the country right here we still have the actually this is the second guy i think yeah this is the second guy but um we got the level two one and one advisors right here so yeah <laughs> decent at this point in the game man it's 30 years into the game uh lots of culture is accepted and promoted obviously you know you do become the Sino Altaic culture automatically and stuff like that. So we're chilling right there. Uh, no allies, just Lan Shang and Hai Shi as tributaries. These may have become like automatic tributaries since uh, you do you did become the emperor of china you didn't destroy the mandate it really doesn't matter if you're just going for that achievement run or not if you stay the emperor or destroy the emperor's ship in the economy tab uh pretty high inflation not making almost any money man uh losing quite a bit of money it's kind of hard to judge these runs so early in the game when players really haven't been able to establish themselves or anything like that right going over into the trade tab pretty nice share of income from trade but there's no income from trade right uh the stuff hasn't refreshed and stuff like that you know what i'm actually gonna go ahead and let a month take by right here man so things can refresh there we go so let's judge it like that there we go now the great powers list is you know what the hell happened here it's updated and stuff like that making a little bit more money from trade so we're chilling right there uh in the tech tab nothing to really see it's tech five four and five right <laughs> pretty you know you are behind in tech who's number one right here probably someone in Italy. i think korea should be yeah, so 666 is the ideal right now, 545, you're not too far off, bro. In the Ideas tab, you actually did pick up an idea group, you went with quality, uh, you know, I don't know what you would pick if you get to your idea group, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, I don't have anything to say about that, I guess because you want to unlock that CCR right there, so maybe you would go with admin, but then again, you need admin for coring, so I don't really know. I don't really know. Yeah, you only need the first three anyway, if you want to really gun for that. But, uh, and the missions tab, nothing to take a look at right here too much, man. Uh, it's only 30 years into the game. Decisions and policies, nothing over there. Under GovCap, obviously, so much GovCap being the emperor of China. In the religion tab, you are Confucian. Uh, yeah, not, not Tangri or... I don't know what uh, Oirat starts off as. Are they Tangri? I guess they are Tangri, but you flip to Confucian or something like that. Lots of provinces that needed to be harmonized or converted or whatever. So we're chilling right there over force limit we'll take a look at the armies pretty soon so actually lots of uh lots of merc companies active man since uh well actually manpower is pretty good but uh yeah free company up there's an army right there there's the there's another merc company there's another army right there merc company got the two free companies up classic right there mongol mercenaries young ning warriors Huai army so yeah so many Merc companies, obviously, this was done so, to save manpower, to help with sieging and stuff like that. All the forts have been destroyed, too, which is something that I'm noticing. So good job on the rapid expansion right there. We already got some combat ability and stuff like that. Pretty good discipline, pretty good morale. And uh, yeah, nothing negative to say right here, man. Nothing negative to say. Army composition is whack, sure, but you don't really care about that when doing this that fast. So we're chilling right there. Uh, in the estate tab, you got the, uh, obviously, the, what you call it, the Emperor of China estates with the Unix act as well he enacted this for the tax and stuff like that so you're chilling you know this run is really good man honestly this is very very easily uh continuable and uh stuff like that right nothing is being cored right now under gov cap stable nation really the economy is the only problem but just focus on admin like you are get like a level five advisor over here state everything in lower autonomy it's really as simple as that if you state all of this and lower autonomy everywhere without any buildings whatsoever you'll be making like 40 ducats a month right now no meme no meme so yeah 
Yeah, it's looking like a real good run, very easily continuable. Now, let's take a look at the development rate here. Obviously, we're a horde, so we shouldn't ex be expecting too much. Kanbalik is developed over here, which is uh, obviously Beijing, but it does start off with that development. Uh, autonomy lowered, uh, well, not everywhere. Yeah, it can definitely be lowered in a lot of places over here that you have already full stated, but uh, why is autonomy lowered here, but not here? I guess it was rising due to low crown ownership and stuff like that. You did start off as Oirat after all, so yeah, lower autonomy man nothing to take a look at in the buildings you did build some obviously but so many can be built so definitely do that if you're continuing this run this actually looks like a really fun run to continue man uh, i'm still debating on starting up that uh continuing your save games series but uh i think if we do that i'm gonna set some strict goals like you play november 11th 1444 to november 11th 1494 just 50 years exactly do whatever you want and then i continue for the next 50 years i think that's a pretty good concept let me know in the comments what you think about that obviously man not a lot of churches built uh, we don't have anything else unlocked, so nothing to take a look at right here. And uh, yeah, man, if you were just going for the achievement, this is a really, really good run. You accomplish that achievement very fast. Still a pretty stable nation, so good job on that. Except uh, uh, meritocracy is super low. And uh, yeah, if you were continuing this run, I'd probably destroy the mandate instead of becoming the holder. But even if you do plan on continuing this run, this game hasn't collapsed at all, man. It's totally, totally very easily be easily uh, sorry playable. Uh, you can probably fix up this nation in 10 years, and after that, continue your blobbing campaign obviously since you become the emperor you're not really going to focus on that but you could if you wanted to so yeah looking pretty good right there let's take a look at the government reforms uh <laughs> nothing to take a look at too much curtail noble privileges interestingly enough probably for the tax and stuff like that money is a struggle when you're expanding this rapidly so nothing negative to say right there you'd probably want to swap to strengthening if you're staying a monarchy and stuff like that or maybe not you do gain massive manpower from controlling all of this so uh everything is pretty chill right there as well so yeah negative things i guess for this run you know obviously Obviously, the economy and the armies buildings can't be judged by now. The stating stuff can't be judged by now because you don't you literally don't have the admin points to do that. So, yeah, all of the negative things can be very easily mitigated. And uh, all the things that haven't been done yet is just because they can't have been done yet so let's go ahead and show the timeline right here i'm gonna go speed three this time let's see the first war probably versus ming obviously yeah there we go taking the force taking the coastline yeah it's just truce breaks man it's just truce breaks now a little bit of chilling that's it that's literally the run right there man simple as that we fought ming truce broke them over and over again fought some other guys that you need to fight over here for some china provinces like saggy yogurt i think is right here or caradel or someone like that annex mongolia that's it what else do you want me to say about this run does it have problems yeah but are they really problems after only playing for 30 years i don't think so man super super fun a super super quick run good job on the achievement and this is a very easily salvageable and fixable campaign where you could continue playing my only real real negative right here is staying with the mandate in case you're planning to continue to run but if you're not it's literally no big deal so even though i said that this wouldn't be a guaranteed five out of five even if we did see problems with it just like the last one for what it is an achievement run and very easily fixable after this i'm still giving this one too a five out of five good job both of you guys on the two campaigns that we've reviewed so far let's take a look at the final one this is an achievement run too and with all that said let's jump into our final run of the day right here this aztec sunset invasion run by mc underscore 95 on may 13th 1762 obviously you know for the sunset invasion run you need to be aztec and control a bunch of uh or own a bunch of european capitals i think it's london paris rome um madrid uh amsterdam maybe something like that so uh yeah let's jump into this run i don't think we've had a new world campaign so far in save game review correct me if i'm wrong but let's take a look at what this player said about this campaign so this player actually submitted two very interesting runs the first one was triple rome which obviously is super hard as well but i decided to do this one since we haven't had a new world one and uh mc underscore 95 says run for sunset invasion of course started as aztec first decades i focused on bastion reforms i had plenty of time before reforming religion europeans didn't show up in mexico at all he says i reformed by neighboring england in the northeast coast around 1540 that's actually quite late for reforming honestly and then i had one really tough war with england took one province in europe as a base for later attack and during the campaign i got rid of exploration and expansion as i didn't need extra colonizers any longer i could conquer both americas way faster if i took religious ideas actually finished this campaign around 1720 so yeah around 42 years after our run right now and he says it spent the rest of the time on building up my country and trying to core both americas still not done completely all right so very interesting description right here let's see 
how you did what you said you did. All right, all right, here we are in our very big Aztec run and uh, not to, you know, be negative immediately, but the first thing I can notice is uh, Russian Suriname. That's right, everyone. Russia is in South America with four provinces right here. And I think... Uh, aside from that and this one right here and then these couple of Spanish ones, I guess. Yeah, you pretty much own all of North and South America, which is really, really good. Castile owns Bermuda as well. But uh, yeah, man, obviously started off as Aztec. Aztec, I think, or what, what you call it, Mexico is still the capital. Level 9 for uh, 77 development. Tenochtitlan developed up to the third tier or whatever right here. And uh, this run is looking really, really strong. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the knit and grit. See if we actually did this achievement. Obviously, the achievement is done. We got Aztec Britain right Right here uh london is owned by aztec paris is owned by aztec uh madrid is owned by aztec i guess that's the one you need to own maybe maybe you need a lisbon too not sure honestly um Rome owned by Aztec, Amsterdam owned by Aztec. So yeah, I think obviously this player has all of the necessary provinces needed to complete this achievement, even though I'm not exactly sure which ones they are. Going over into the Great Powers list, 8,000 dev, 6,000 after the next Great Power, which is Diviet. What is this Great Powers list? Oh, and uh, Economic Hegemon too. Let me just take a look at the rest of the world real quick. Okay, so huge Kilwa, uh, Mamluks and Egypt existing at the same time. Lebanon owns provinces in Egypt. Mali somehow stayed alive. Adran is big yemen is big ottomans are dead croatia is massive uh three nations in india ming doesn't exist diviet took it all over we got chi meow what is this run man the rest of the world looks absolutely cursed europe and asia and africa are are uh, absolutely cursed we got scandinavia as well but uh yeah good job on the great powers ranking and on the economic hegemon right here let's take a look at the court so we got this guy we have elections apparently we got what i'm not even gonna try and pronounce that boys he's a 311 level five advisor is looking really good right there in the government tab lots of cultures accepted and promoted and we are uh you got the status versus monarchist going <laughs> come on <laughs> uh, i guess that's funny yeah well if you reform off of england uh, if they had something like this going sure but yeah it's it's just funny you don't see these things too often uh max absolutism 60 current absolutism 32 this doesn't really matter in a run like this everything is accomplished panama canal built up as well i can notice it just right here uh going over in the diplomacy tab allied to austria and that that's it. No possible rivals. This is just, I guess, to make some wars versus these guys easier or whatnot. Not really too relevant, honestly. Going over in the economy tab, absolutely bonkers economy, making about 3k ducats a month in the positive. Huge income from production, huge income from trade, not that much from tax, but we don't care. And all of the gold mines, are, I think, that this player owns have been developed. And let's take a look at how many there are. Look at this look. All right, so these ones over here, man, they already exist in 1444, obviously. Uh, these one may have been spawned by natives. Not sure if they actually exist or not, but look at how many have spawned in South America. And uh, this was originally Catholic, so colonized by someone else. Uh, yeah, like um, uh, Portugal and Castile and stuff like that. So those were spawned by the AI. Look how many gold mines spawn, man. And a lot of these have been devved up, man. So good job on that. Making so, so much money from gold. And inflation is still going down. So good job on that. Amazing economy right here. In the trade department, decent share coming in from trade. 135% goods produced. Super strong right there. Ahead of time in every tech except for Diplo right here. But we're still chilling. And in the ITS tab, we got quality trade, human espionage economic offensive defensive really good picks right here uh like you said so yourself i'd probably go with a religious instead of humanist uh because you know you guys know i like that one a lot more but not to say this one is bad so excellent idea group picks right here good job on trade and economic um one of my favorite idea groups in the game even though economic isn't that strong anymore good mill idea group picks not sure why you went espionage maybe for a little faster expansion over in europe no big deal on that i'm not gonna knock you so everything is legit right here uh aztec is getting missions in the new update i think Thing, so no need to take a look at this pretty nice decisions and policies enacted right here pretty good are there any ones that need to be active that you don't have active no all the ones you already have are really really good you can restore the roman empire that's right you can do it as a pagan nation under governing capacity which is awesome right here no rebels whatsoever man and in the religion tab obviously everything is being converted although it is pretty slow since you only have two missionaries and not that much missionary strength but nothing real negative to say about this since you went with humanist anyway in the military department we got 
got compatibility with all of these guys, obviously, from quality and policies. Pretty good professionalism, excellent morale, massive force limit, really good discipline as well. Everything is looking great right here. Combat width is 40. The armies are, uh, yeah, if they're split, they're good. If they're split, they're good. I think they are split, or maybe they're not. Yeah, so if this is one army, it's looking excellent right there. So good job on that. In the subjects department, we do have some um, trade companies. So the Philippine trade company, I guess that's this. Okay, no big deal. North Sea Company, I guess that's over here. Narrow Sea Company, I I guess that's over here. Yeah, that's the English Channel one. Liguria is the Italy one. Iberia is the... Yeah, yeah, okay. Guinea, where would that be? Is that over here? Where is this? I actually don't know where that is and I can't be bothered to look. Maybe it's over here or over here, something like that. Yeah, and the Burgundy one is obviously right here. So everything is looking really good right there. In the Estates Department, massive crown on ownership and still stuff granted to the Estates, which is always excellent to see. So good job on that. Everything that I've seen so far, boys, I'm loving. Main trade node is, let's see, is it Mexico? It's not Mexico. Our main trade node is where? Chesapeake Bay? Yes. Which is actually pretty good to have as an end node over in... Uh, in the new world since you can route everything to the caribbean and then the caribbean routes to chesapeake so good job on that and you're also collecting in the english channel pretty good on that as well so good job good job very good job let's take a look at the culture map mode right now aztec and haven't hasn't spread that far obviously this is what the player colonized everything that is aztec everything that isn't aztec he conquered it from uh, other nations and stuff like that most of North America is Nahuatl, uh, most of South America is Catholic, and in the religious reforms, obviously, everything is completed right here, so no need to even take a look at that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the development a little bit. So, Mexico 77 dev, lots of other provinces devved up pretty high. You know, I consider high development anything above 20, honestly, so things are looking pretty good right there. Let's actually try and find all of the gold provinces stacked right here and see which ones have been developed so yeah this one's been devved and actually man only only one has been dev to 10 but yeah, you're still making so much money from gold that it literally doesn't matter at this point so you know nothing negative to say about that let's go ahead and take a look at the buildings or actually the autonomy right now hasn't been lowered everywhere that it can and no used to have a lot of provinces over here i guess to lower autonomy in but you're chilling with that now let's go ahead and take a look at the buildings so marketplaces yeah still a lot of marketplaces can be built so maybe not too much of a focus on buildings huh trade depots yeah some have been built obviously we can take a look at all the blue provinces and then stock exchanges some stock exchanges as well so yeah definitely a lack of focus on buildings but listen when you have an economy like this man do you really need to focus on the economy buildings i don't know but yeah courthouses obviously built up quite a lot that's pretty good right there still under guff cap so nothing negative to say even if they're not maxed out let's take a look at uh, if they've been upgraded they have been upgraded to town halls and universities lots of universities actually that's pretty good good job on that let's take a look at uh army buildings maybe yeah some uh training fields once again some workshops there are quite a lot of workshops so good job on that have they been upgraded yes they have perfect right there even though a lot more can be upgraded temples not that many temples mostly in south america that the you know uh castilian and portuguese guys built so whatever on that and then let's take a look at the manufacturers manufacturers are legit as well so good job on that buildings aren't perfect man but they are really really good and i am enjoying what i'm seeing quite a lot now let's take a look at the government reforms feudal nobility obviously since you reformed off of uh, england and stuff like that curtail noble privileges uh yeah you don't need strength and expand real courts pretty good curtail clerical privileges uh i think this would help you out more since it oh, oh wait you're still not waddle I, I was thinking about aztec sorry so yeah i guess this is good if you're aztec organized military staff is good states general this is where you enable the status versus monarchists so no big deal on that if you chose it meritocratic is good mercantilistic is good six books is good regional representation is good so everything right here is also pretty legit so awesome run man the only negative things i can think of right now is uh maybe more focus on the buildings i guess if your economy wasn't this good already and uh a little tiny minus on the fact that you don't have all of north and south america but it's really not a big deal at all everything is looking really really legit good navy as well building lots of buildings as we can see still lots of soldiers households universities and stuff like that i actually didn't take a look at these other ones um let's see impressment offices none of those maybe soldiers households yeah there they are and maybe state houses too no none of those so yeah everything is looking real good right there awesome run man let's take a look at the timeline here we are in the timeline as aztec obviously you wouldn't be doing a whole lot during this point in the game is just conquering vassalizing releasing these guys passing reforms and stuff like that so the first you know 50 ish years are you know not slow as aztec but you don't really grow you just focus on uh on passing reforms and stuff like that 
there we go a little bit of expansion over here now already starting to eat up these guys we don't see the colonizers just yet i guess some of them are over here there we go more expansion this way uh starting to border some of the north american nations is this colonization or not i think it is colonization or maybe just regular expansion i really don't know but uh yeah he said reformed around the 1540s so maybe now is the border with england right there something like that so there we go there's the reformation i'm guessing it's already done by this point so now is when the rapid expansion will continue we can see expansion in north america and colonization over here in central america more colonization up here in the coast pushing into south america as well in the caribbean so pretty you know gradual uh, you know linear growth and stuff like that more expansion over in the east coast over here we got some uh yeah other colonial nations forming so these are the castilian guys the portuguese guys over here a uh, pretty big focus on north america right now leaving south america alone i guess it's good to build up your power base up here and finish colonization and whatnot uh russia has owned this for quite a while over here i wonder how they actually got it man since it's already over here there we go massive war versus new granada at this point you're hoping that the overlords don't come in they don't have to come in since you're a new world nation but they could still enforce a peace on you expansion over here in the northern peru you know region and stuff like that got pretty much a third of south america now finishing off some colonization and some natives in north america and there we go now we're about to see some rapid conquest yeah boom there we go uh yeah super easy wrap up over here of the south american guys we're already in europe which i forgot to take a look at a little bit but there we go there's the expansion over there as we just saw pushing into some of these guys right here and uh you know if i could roll back the timeline to take a look at this again i would but we can't there we go finishing off some nations over there and we're nearing our end date right now awesome so yeah man that was the aztec run right there looking really really good i really don't have anything negative to say about uh, this campaign at all probably the most perfect one out of the ones we've seen today everything is absolutely pristine and if those two other runs deserve a five out of five then of course so does this one so i'm gonna rate this aztec sunset invasion campaign just like the other two campaigns a five out of five good job on everyone today i think this is the most uh, perfect batch of save games that we've ever had so far even though they were handpicked to be really fun and exciting and stuff like that and that has been our final save game of the day so yeah there you have it man uh the three campaigns for today eat your green back in control and sunset invasion all of them super super fun ones i had a lot of fun reviewing them really good gameplay for all three of our players right here for today but uh i think that's been it so uh yeah as you all know boys if you want to have your save games potentially reviewed drop them in the save games for vid channel the chances of your stuff getting reviewed is higher because now i'm not following the order in which they were posted in instead i just uh, go in and try and pick and choose interesting ones so drop a little two or three sentence text about what was going on in your campaign maybe a screenshot as well that will have a higher chance of getting your campaigns picked and stuff like that so definitely go ahead and drop your submissions and you might find yourself on a save game review as well but i think that's been about it for today if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another u4 video